dear students welcome to my class i hope you are in good health and i think that you are enjoying the lessons of games and sports very much so my today's lesson is on unit 7 lesson 3 from english past paper and this class is for class 7 let's go to the lesson this lesson is on what games and sports do you like look at the pictures there are many kinds of games and sports do do you know about these games and sports now let's match the name of the games and sports with the picture number 1 uh, football a football b badminton C cricket and D volleyball E gymnastics F aerobics G athletics H yoga Now let's introduce with the new vocabularies of this lesson The first one is middle aged. It is an adjective. The period of age beyond young adulthood, but before the onset of old age. Suppose your uh, father or mother is middle aged. So you can say, my father is a middle aged man. Then couch potato. It is a noun. It means one who watches TV all the times. Suppose your younger brother or sister watches cartoon all day long. For this reason, you can't get the scope to watch TV. So you can say him like this. My younger brother is a couch potato. and frequency it is a noun it means the rates at which something happens or report suppose raja is ill very ill and he had a frequency of fever last night now look at some phrases what is phrase do you know phrase means a group of word group of words that stands together once a week it is a phrase and it means one time in a week For example I go to learn swimming once a week twice a month two times in a month You can say cut your hair twice a month twice a year it means three times in a year For example I go to my village home thrice in a year you can also add this at the time of summer vacation and to its or pujas now your task is to make some more new sentences by using these words again you can follow my examples now answer the questions do you know what games and sports are these are 
which was discussed at the beginning of this lesson yes these are you can say like this yes these are football badminton cricket volleyball gymnastics aerobics athletics and yoga number 2 do males and females in our country enjoy any of these games and sports you can say like this yes both males and females in our country enjoy football badminton cricket gymnastics and athletics do you enjoy any of these or other games and sports which or which ones one or ones you can answer yes i enjoy football cricket basketball and tennis number 4 which of the above sports are commonly practiced by women in your locality which one are by men you can answer women in our locality commonly practice cricket and athletics and men practice football badminton cricket and gymnastics dear students by this time we have discussed on some games and sports which are not so much familiar to us like aerobics yoga and baseball so we are going to have a clear idea on those games and sports aerobics is an exercise for heart and lungs now let's watch a video on aerobics tournament so this is aerobics now go for yoga what is yoga it is an exercise for body and controlling breathing to become fit again watch a video on yoga 
Leslie Fightmaster, and welcome to Kids Yoga. I'm here with Indy, who's in the front, and Stone in the back. Um, come and sit up nice and tall with your shins crossed. Let's do a little breathing to start. So as you inhale, take a nice long breath through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. And again, inhale, big breath, lengthen, lengthen, exhale through the mouth. One more. Inhale, biggest breath yet. Take a big breath, and then exhale through the mouth. And then let's turn and make our way into table on the hands and the knees for cat and cow. So as you inhale, you'll bring your chest forward and let your belly drop down. Chin up like a, like a cow. Ooh, and as you exhale, round your back like a cat. Meow. Inhale like a cow. Moo. Exhale. Meow. Press away from the floor. One more time. Inhale. Big breath. Moo. Exhale. Meow. And now take your hips all the way back to your heels in child's pose. And this child's pose, let's take a moment to be grateful for our earth. Stretching your chest back toward the thighs. And your head is just hanging between your arms. And breathe here. Big breath still. Take just another breath and then step or jump your feet up. Inhale, bring your hands just below your knees and lengthen through your spine. Exhale and fold for kind of like a monkey. Inhale, reach your arms all the way up, high up into the sky. And exhale, bring the hands to center. So this is saluting the sun. Let's be grateful for the sun here. So as you inhale, you'll reach your arms way up high. As you exhale, fold forward all the way down. You can bend your knees as much as you like. As you inhale, come back. Exhale and bring your hands. Exhale and fold, fold. So grateful for the earth. In a long way facing your mat and step your feet out really wide. Turn your right leg. Take your arms out to the sides. As you exhale, bend your knee. Oops, we lost stone, but this is warrior pose, so it's okay. He's going to get back up. He's a yeah, We'll straighten the front leg and now we're a warrior again. Bend the knee. Oh, we almost lost Indy, but he's got it. And then inhale, reach up, and exhale, hands to hips, take your feet to parallel, and other side, inhale, arms up, out to the sides, exhale, bend the knee. Now, Indian Stone want you to know that they both have YouTube, Ch is a warrior, up he comes, come and check out their YouTube channels, come up on your inhale, I'll you can do exercises like this way. This yoga is very beneficial to your health. So follow, you can follow these exercises. Now go to baseball. A baseball, a ba uh, what is baseball? A ball game played between two teams of nine on a field with a diamond shaped circuit of four bases. It is played chiefly in the U.S., Canada, Latin America, and East Asia. Now watch a video on baseball. The essence of the game is between the pitcher of one team against the batter of the other team. As mentioned before, the batter's job is to hit the ball between the foul lines. But the pitcher's job is to get the batter out by throwing into the strike zone. This is an imaginary box that's the width of home plate and roughly between the bat's armpits and knees. If the pitcher throws the ball through this area, it's a strike. If the bat swings and misses any ball, it's also a strike. If the bat hits the ball outside the foul lines, this can be a first or second strike only. And obviously three strikes means you're out. A pitch outside this area is called a ball. Four balls against the batter and he gets to walk to first base. That sounds simple enough, but there are three other ways for a team to get you out. Firstly, if the batter hits the ball along the ground, the opposing team can throw the ball to the base he's running to. If the ball beats the batter to the base, he's out. A batter can be tagged out whilst running between the bases. If he hits the ball and the ball is caught in the air by the opposing team, he's also out. Once three outs have been made, that half of the inning is over and the other team gets the bat. Once both teams have batted, this is known as an inning. 
the game is played over nine innings. There are no ties in baseball, so if the score is tied after nine innings, extra innings will be played to determine the winner. Now that's basically it, but there's a few other rules you'll need to understand before playing or going to the game. For example, home run. If a batter hits the ball out of the park between the foul lines, the batter, and anyone else standing on the bases, gets to walk freely around the bases and back to home. All runs score. Stealing bases. To help batters move along the bases, some players will try and make a run for the next base. This is a risky gamble as the opposing team will be prepared for this and will try and get you out. If the batter is caught out, he is caught stealing. If a catcher misses or drops the ball, the batter is allowed to try and steal first base. Tagging up. If the ball is caught in the air, any player standing on the bases will start from that base before running to the next one. Round rule double. I think you have enjoyed the videos very much. Now it's time to note your homework. Your homework is a dialogue between two friends about the importance of learning swimming. Dear students, learning swimming is not only for reading, learning swimming, but also it is essential for your life. You should also learn it practically. Do you know that drowning is a major cause of death among Bangladeshi youngsters? Yes. So the skill of swimming is a life skill. Life skill refers to the skill you need to make the most out of life. Any skill that is useful in your life can be considered a life skill, such as tying your shoelaces, swimming, driving a car, using a computer, cooking, sewing, sewing um, are for most people useful life skills. Broadly speaking, the term life skill is usually used for any of the skills needed to deal well and effectively, effectively with the challenges of life. It should therefore be clear, clear that everyone will potentially have a different list of the skills they can consider the most essential in life. Now you have a huge free time, so it is high time you learned the life skill some of the life skills to cope with the challenge of future. You can take help from your guardians in this regard. Okay, I need to take off now. Take care and stay out of trouble. Thank you.